1993, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park opened its doors. The US science fiction adventure made in America almost six times the $63 million budget back, around a billion worldwide, and received mostly positive feedback. It is based on Michael Crichton's same name novel, here in Germany, Dino Park, from 1993 who also wrote the script. More about the author in the Westworld, Coma, Runaway and Andromeda retrospectives. Using DNA found in amber, the super-rich businessman John Hammond clones various species of dinosaurs in order to present them to paying visitors in his Jurassic amusement park on a remote island. After a fatal work accident, specialists are brought in to check the facility before opening day. Paleontologist Alan, his girlfriend, the plant researcher Ellie, and chaos theorist Ian. During the viewings, Hammond's grandchildren are also there. The computer technician in charge switches off the security systems in order to secretly steal dinosaur DNA for a competing company. As a result, some dangerous reptiles manage to escape from their enclosures and are now hunting the visitors. The iconic soundtrack is by John Williams, who also scored part 2. Part 3 by Don Davis uses some themes from the first one. Jurassic Park is undoubtedly the best dinosaur movie of all time and, like Terminator 2 two years before, set new standards in terms of effects that still look good even after 30 years. Similar to T2, again by Stan Winston, who was also on board for the two sequels, there were a lot of practical effects and the CGI was used as rarely as possible, just around 6 minutes during the over 2 hour runtime. Movie and book are both very good and have similar plots, but not identical. Many scenes play out completely differently. And as usual, I prefer Crichton's more detailed, much darker novel, which basic idea reminds of his Westworld from 1973, which was also about a technical innovation, life like robots, that was marketed profitably in an amusement park, which also ended in a disaster. In the novel, for example, one of the main goals is to stop a supply ship on its way to the mainland, that has unknowingly raptors on board. There, the billionaire John Hammond is not a sympathetic character, like in the movie, and gets eaten by some predators. And the chaos theorist and the chief scientist also don't make it to the end, while the lawyer and the hunter, who die in the movie, are among the survivors in the original. Ellen is also a widower, not with his assistant, and he doesn't have anything against children either. He's even happy that Tim is also interested in dinosaurs, like him. In the original, older than his annoying sister, and also the one who is interested in computers and how to use them with a much more important role than in the movie. Here the park is completely bombed by the military in the final and it is implied that some animals escaped. In Steven Spielberg's The Lost World, billionaire Hammond, who has lost control of his company InGen, remembers that there is a second island with dinosaurs. Now mutated into an eco-whatever, he wants with positive PR, huh? Prevent InGen, which also organize with hunting group safaris for rich people, from taking the animals from the island and showing them in zoos. 
which is why he also sends an expedition led by Ian Malcolm. As a chaos theorist who is practically forced into it, Hammond has already sent his girlfriend Sarah ahead unnoticed. He's clearly the best man for the job. And somehow his completely pulled out of their ass alleged daughter sneaks on board. Of course it's pure coincidence that Spielberg has some black children himself which besides to annoy like hell that she now wants to go back home eliminates predators with silly gymnastics exercises. There everything goes downhill as usual. But mainly through ex-girlfriend Sarah who constantly endangers everyone around through careless behavior and the human life contempting sabotage actions of the earth first Greenpeace fucks of the subspecies Ecologis Fascistoides Idiotis. It's a shame that even today this particularly protected species, namely police protection, is despite declining evolution not finally dying out as nature intended. Sarah and her eco weirdos even hide an injured T-Rex baby. At some point, now badly battered thanks to actions like this, the hunters and explorer groups have to work Work together to get to an old supply center where they can call for help. Ah sure, he's just sitting there in the middle of the jungle of death distracting himself with music. In the last 15 minutes, which seem like something from a completely different monster movie, a T-Rex on board of a ship with a dead crew somehow makes it to San Diego, probably for an important Godzilla casting call, and runs around looking for its child. The very weak rehash with mediocre reviews made over 600 million dollars worldwide at costs of 73 million. Despite the once again solid effects, except for the CGI in daylight which is just awful, everything here looks like a commissioned work in which nobody put too much thought into. For example, the crew of the unmanned ghost ship were supposed to have been killed by raptors, but the scene wasn't even shot. And the whole bullshit ending only seems so tacked on because it actually is, and only an afterthought shortly before filming. Four years after its grandiose predecessor, all those involved in Jurassic money printing machine The Lost Pride show us what they are really about. Simply making a fast buck. So Crichton reluctantly pushed out in 1995 a sequel to one of his novels for the first and only time, in which he promptly brought the dead Malcolm right back to life. Because who cares? It's also telling that this time he had nothing to do with David Cobb's even more atrocious screenplay. See also The Last Mummy and two Indiana Jones fuck ups. which does recycle some scenes and ideas from the first book, which didn't make it into the predecessor, such as the introduction with the beach attack. But apart from the basic idea with the second island, it tells a completely different, unnecessary, boring and stupid story. In the book, among other things, the rival company whose espionage operation was responsible for the first disaster plays an important role. There Malcolm sets off in a special caravan with two engineers as a rescue team to the, after the dissolution of the engine company secretly kept practically forgotten second island from which animals keep turning up somewhere and are destroyed by the government to keep the secret when he learns that a lost colleague, a rich paleontologist with whom he had tracked the island down, has gone there on his own. Two of his students, one of them an 11 year old child prodigy, sneak on board the expedition, an ex-girlfriend later also joins them and there is also a situation with the parents of an injured T-Rex baby because it was treated by the ex. <laughs> In Joe Johnson's Jurassic Park 3 from 2001, a rich couple who want to rescue their stranded child after a sailing trip with the mother's new boyfriend, lure under false pretenses Alan Grant, the paleontologist from the first part, to the dinosaur island from part 2. There everything goes down the drain as usual. The plane breaks down, the group is stranded and on the way from A to B is decimated by creatures down to the main characters. I only miss you when I'm breathing. Hey. 
Ellen finds out that he's been taken for a ride by the unsympathetic couple who are constantly fighting and shouting and are in fact divorced and broke and their spawn turns out to be a smart ass mini Rambo who has supposedly been sneaking around for 8 weeks, presumably also has stumbled across the island hairdresser in the process so that the audience similar to the last one early on starts cheering for the raptors. New, however, are the Spinosaurus who quickly finishes off the T-Rex and the Pteranodon which already sailed around for a second in the last part just before the credits. They supposedly can't leave the cage until shortly before the end, unless they can, like at the beginning when they attack boats and parachutes. The meeting with the flying reptiles in the Thunderdome and the river ride are from the first novel. The T-Rex sequences simply replace with a new dinosaur. Give you a kiss, but I am the second infusion with even more modest reviews made with a 93 million dollar budget almost 370 million worldwide back. It is actually only known for two things, the talkative raptor, a dream sequence Alan. and the in contrast to the predecessors comparatively short running time of just 90 minutes with an abrupt ending. I only miss you when I'm breathing. in which simply out of nowhere marines are rushing to the rescue and where they obviously simply gave up on the script. Something like, fuck it, nobody's watching this far anyway. And yet again we get to see another soulless commissioned work where everything looks like second choice. They didn't even bother stealing the name this time, as with the last The Lost World. It's just called part 3, uh, probably forgotten. They also forgot in addition to a proper movie title, proper ending or a new film score to include any antagonist or villain. <laughs> I didn't even realize that it was in the cinema at the time and only watched it on video out of routine when it suddenly appeared. Even if I'm not a fan of the sequels, uh, who is? They are still 2001 and high art compared to the unwatchable CGI crap we get served since 2015. But more on this big pile of dinosaur shit in the same named excavation report. Stand me 